Hey, this episode is all about reviewing and commenting on RFC's request for comments to help us help you with PowerShell. And this episode is for everyone, devs, ops, cloud, on-prem. Hey. Now, remember back in the day when you used to have to wait four or five years before you could see a product, and then if it didn't do what you wanted, you could make comments and it would take four or five years for that to get fixed? Well, this ain't that, and that ain't PowerShell, because PowerShell, we can make changes now. So, I want to show you how to do that. First, here's my thoughts on RFCs. One of my goals is to help you. So you can help me, and one way we can help each other is through the RFC or request for comment process. I want to increase the visibility and community awareness and hope to increase engagement around the RFCs for PowerShell. If you're not familiar with making changes to an open source project, well, this is how it begins. You, me, the engineers here at Microsoft, we all submit feature additions and changes through this process. Yep, what we think here is discussed openly with the entire community. Beats the old days of being in the dark all the time. So if you want to know what's being worked on in PowerShell, this is how you know. But more importantly, your opinions, your advice, and your warnings matter and can change the result for the better. I need your help, not just on this one RFC, but on all of them. We want to know what you think. Now, let me show you what we're thinking in regards to the error view and how they look. First of all, let's open up PowerShell and let me show you what we're kind of talking about in this RFC. To get started, let me show you the version of PowerShell that I'm working with. I happen to be using Preview uh, 2 of PowerShell version 7. I'll try to always show you this kind of stuff before I start a demonstration. And really what I'd like to do is let me clear the screen and I'm going to run a command. And you've seen this plenty, not necessarily this command, but error messages. What we found is this is, and this is, I found this in my own experience uh, trying to help people learn PowerShell, is that there's a tendency that this portion of the error message, the actual exception itself, doesn't often get read. In other words, when all of this red stuff appears on the screen, although this is very good and very useful information, a lot of people the, the error that they're looking for gets obscured, and so their eyes kind of glaze over this. If you have a couple of errors that occur from a script or something, you can quickly see that the screen's going to fill up, and it, people have a tendency not to take a look. So what we're thinking is, is we could simplify this. First of all, let me show you something. I don't know if you know this, but there is a preference variable called um, error view. That's where we get the name for this RFC. And this variable stores a value of the view that displays your errors. In other words, these the how you're seeing the errors on the screen is controlled through a view. There are two views, normal view, which is the default, which is what you normally see. There's something called category view, and you can experiment with that if you want. As a matter of fact, you can change views just like this. You can say uh, equals and cat uh, category view. If I even got close to spelling that right, that would switch the view over. And you can always switch it back to normal. However, what we're thinking is creating a new view. Currently in the RFC, it's called concise view. However, you'll see that we're actually debating the name of the view. We might just call it simple view. That's where you can help us. And that view will look a little bit differently. Maybe something like this. So instead of all of that redness all over your screen, how about if I do something like this, I'm going to use a commandlet that I just made up, and I'm going to have it fail. And this time, well, at least let me try to at least make it look like I'm trying to type it incorrectly. How about an error message similar to that? Instead of all of the extraneous information, we put a simple, short exce uh, exception message. 
Now, I kind of like the word error in front of it. It keeps it similar to warnings and verbose statements that also have warning and verbose in it. But you can take a look at this in the RFC. We also talked about possibly doing something like this. And I'm going to show you uh, another version of this. I'm not saying that this is exactly what we're going to do, but saying that we also might include the positional information of what line and what character. Now, on a single line failure, that information over here doesn't make any sense. Why do you have this? There's only one line it can possibly be. If it's coming reported back from a script that is running, that could be very useful. Either way, the other part to this RFC is not only do we want to change these errors to make them really simple and they just stand out to you so that you see them real quick, we also always want to make sure that you can get the full error information. So we're talking about adding a commandlet. Right now in the RFC, I have it named as resolve error record. And that commandlet will give you a full breakdown of the error message, all of the details that we used to get, plus more. Now, if you've worked with errors before, what that, what that commandlet is really doing is giving you kind of a version that you used to be able to manually type. You still can manually type this. You can get your latest error out of dollar sign error, which is an array of all errors that have occurred in this session. Er, um, element zero is the last error that occurred. And you can say format, and I just do this as FL star, so format list star, because I'm doing it usually at the command prompt interactively, and say dash force. And it'll provide all of that same information that we're thinking of making a commandlet that would do it for you. Anyways, all of this is discussed in that RFC. So now, all we got to do is show you how to read an RFC, and then you can start making comments and tell us what you like and what you don't like. Now let me show you how I review RFCs. It can be a little bit tricky at first, plus I have some tips from Superstar Joey on how to best comment and review RFCs. So let's dive in and let me show you how I like to read an RFC. First of all, we got to get there. So HTTPS, go out to github.com. And oh, let me stop here and just warn you, you need to have an account on GitHub. It's free. Just go make one if you don't have one, but you have to have one. So it's then PowerShell slash PowerShell dash RFC. This will launch your favorite browser and take you to the RFC site on GitHub. So up here, PowerShell, PowerShell RFC. And I'm not going to take you through everything on this because we're going to be doing multiple episodes on the RFC process. But I want you to notice, if you look down here towards the left, you'll see where you can look at RFCs that have been accepted that have gone into their different stages, like draft and experimental and final. That's not where we're going. That's one of the confusing things. Because if you go in here, let me just show you. If you were to go in here and you were to select an RFC here, yes, you can read the RFC of what the change or modification or feature is going to be. The problem is you don't see any comments because we don't comment at this point in time. This is after the comments. So you want to be a part of the process where we do comment. So let me move back and just show you how this is going to look. When you get here, you want to go up to pull requests. So I'll explain this in more detail on a later episode when we talk about how to write your own RFC. However, you will make your RFCs as pull requests. When you go to pull requests, you will see the RFC that we're interested in today down here, error view, it's number 215. Then you can go into the pull request and see the comments and make your own comments. So you go to pull request, then choose the RFC. Now at the very top up here, it's gonna give you some information about the RFC. Whoops, I'm not in the place that I wanna be. So this is a great example. So notice how it went to the RFC and I'm on the conversation page. Well, the conversation page means all the comments. So if you scroll through here, you don't really see the RFC, you just see everybody's comments. This is something else that confuses people and makes people, oh, I don't know what I'm doing, I don't want to comment that. Well, yeah, this isn't where you want to be. What I like to do is I go over to Files Changed, and this is where the RFC is. Here at the very top, you can see some header information, who authored the RFC, the current status of it. 
The important part is here, when comments are due by, so as you can see, by the end of this month is when we're gonna close comments on this. So hurry up right now and go out and read and comment on this, that's the point. And also, you'll notice here, plan to implement, yep, we're gonna do it, we just want you to comment on it. Now at this point, you can now read the rest of the RFC. So it'll go down and the RFC will start to break it down. What you'll see is comments now intermixed into the RFC. So if somebody was reading something, the on-screen experience when receiving an error message is controlled through the views, normal view and category view. These are user selectable. Well, Steve wanted to make some changes or wanted to make a comment. So he made a comment here. And in his case, he actually made some changes. <laughs> But see, that's how you read this. So you can go through and read it and you can see everybody's comments. Now, what are you supposed to do? Well, the idea here is that you're gonna read through this RFC, take a look at what we're talking about and you will add your viewpoint. Let me give you an example. How do you make your own comment in an RFC? Number one, see these little pluses that are popping up? Let's say that you're reading this, to improve both comprehension and troubleshooting experience, and you're like, you know what, Jason, I think you're wrong. Um, click the plus, and it will open up a comment. You can say, Jason, I think you meant to say, now I'm not actually going to click this and, and put it in, but you can then click start review, and that comment gets added. So you too can just go in and add comments. Now, if you see somebody else that's added a comment, and you want to you want to agree with it like here's one from Steve oh this is where they're talking about oh yeah Steve's talking about we had this conversation of calling the new view concise view and some people are like no let's call it simple view that's simpler so here's where Steve is saying simple view if I agree with that there are two things I can do I can go in here and I can write I agree with you Steve or I can go over here and make a decision like I agree with you, I give you a thumbs down, I love you. Well, I do, but no, I'm just agreeing with you. Either way, you've got two options, either comment or pick one of these. Which ones do you do? This is when it's time for Superstar Joey. Yeah, I'm hoping for some reverb effect, but I probably won't get that. For Joey's helpful tips on what to do when you're reviewing an RFC. So one of the things that Joey says, if you're just going to agree or disagree with a comment, let us know. But do it by going in here and clicking thumbs up. So one of Joey's rules is do use a thumbs up or a thumbs down rather than typing in all of extra words that we don't need. So yeah, here's a real positive way so you can support. So I went through and other people have gone through. You give out, yeah, that's, that's great. That's what we want to do. Now, if you're not saying, I agree with you or I disagree, but you have some comment that you want to make, then absolutely go down here and write in your comment. The other Joey tip that I have for you today is this. Do me a favor. Make sure that you reread your comment before you click start review. Just reread it real quick because one of Joey's big, big, and this I think this is his favorite thing to do when reviewing an RFC, do read back your comments before posting to make sure that you're being considerate of other people. And here's what I mean by that. I want you to think this through. You guys, you know this. Sometimes when you get an email, it might come from somebody that, that you know really well and is a really nice person, but just the way that email read, it kind of read snarky or just not didn't come across really well do that we're a community and we're all friends we're trying to help each other so we don't need to be yelling at each other so just check your comments and reread them and make sure that they sound appropriate for this audience also keep that in mind when you're reading other people's comments sometimes people will comment and don't take it the wrong way take it the right way for which it was intended so be nice and play nice in comments but most importantly comment Tell us what you're thinking. There is no thought that you have that is too stupid. One of my favorite things I've learned recently is that an opinion is worth an additional 10 IQ points or EQ points. I don't know, <laughs> but an additional like 10 IQ points. If you have an opinion, then write it in there so that we know what it is.
And that's pretty simple. That's all you have to do. You can go through the rest of the RFC and then go through and start making comments. The important thing is do it real soon because we're going to close comments on this and take your wonderful ideas along with our wonderful ideas that we've all discussed together and make it actually happen. And believe me, this is one of the things I've been wanting to see changed for a long time to help especially new people to PowerShell, simplifying the view for their error messages. Hey, thanks for checking out this episode. And keep something in mind, we're gonna be talking about more RFCs and I'll show you more RFCs. And I'll also take you through the process on how to write your own RFC. So we'll spend quite a bit of time in multiple episodes on this. Thanks again, PowerShell rocks. And remember, help someone. <laughs>